Welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast. My name is Winter, I'm a comedian, and this is my show. Those that are new to the show, welcome. Those that are old to the show, thank you for coming back, guys. This is episode 118 with a bit of a dangerous comedian. Uh, he is one half of the Hate and Live crew. He's a third of the Three Speech Podcast. And he also has his own Instagram account. <laughs> it's at Persian of Interest. That's P E R S I A N of interest. Go and find him there. He's a great comedian. He doesn't take any prisoners and he's not afraid to do comedy how he wants to do it. He's been on various TV talent shows, but I'm going to let you listen to that as he speaks about it in this podcast. I don't want to ruin or bury the lead for this episode. So you can find him on Insta, the Three Speech Podcast. He's one half of the Hate and Life crew. If you're ever in Edinburgh and you want to see a, just an interesting show that doesn't take any prisoners, it's Hate and Life. So go and check that out in Edinburgh if you're ever there. Or he might be doing Hate and Life around the country as well. Uh, maybe in the Angel Comedy Club or like, you know, some of the best comedy clubs in London. So Hate and Life, search it. He's also online as DariusDavis.com. So go and check his stuff out there. You can also find me online on there at Winter Dominus. That's W I N T R D O M I N U S. And I'm there on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And I'll be doing some content releasing on those places. And if you like this podcast, you go to Facebook, like the page. Also join the Comedy Defect Podcast Facebook group because I put live gig dates on there for the gig that I run in Redbourne. That's the first Tuesday of the month, every month. And we have people from Live at the Apollo people that are breaking into TV, people are just starting comedy and they're just finding their comedy legs and uh, just building up their comedy chops there. And it's where comedy lives, it's live. They're an older crowd and they make you work for it. It's a real challenge every month to MC that gig. I love doing it. It's just so much fun uh, what I can get up those stairs. I say I'm not doing many live shows, but the rehab for my legs is 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 slow going. I'll be doing a show about breaking my legs, which is going to be very, very funny. It is already funny, but it just needs a bit of, bit of toning up. <laughs> like, like my legs, just a bit of a, a few uh, outings to kind of like get it into shape. But yeah, so that is going to be happening first Tuesday of the month in Redbourne. If you like this podcast enough and uh, you want to donate, you can go to Patreon, type in D Comedy Defect Podcast, donate as much or as little as you feel this podcast is worth. If you can't donate, that's okay. Just tell your friends about your favorite episode. Tell us be where we are and what we're up to. And uh, if you can't do that, that's fine. Look, just enjoy your life. You know, I hope you're having a good October and uh, it's been uh, fruitful and you've had a good September and October was great and uh, you're just kind of chilling. You're kind of batting down the hatches now. And I wish you... I'll be good to summer and uh, the October is you've not put any Halloween decorations up and you can just knock that door and uh, <laughs> get ready with the power hose if they try and put something through your letterbox. And so yeah, this is episode 118, Darius Davies, Hate and Live crew and also Three Speech Podcast. I hope you enjoy it. And I thought oh, it's not going to go on for very long. Then it went off very easy. Then I did quite a lot in the in between between time. Then the lockdown happened. So going into next year, I'm going to try and put out more content and do stuff a little bit more professionally. I think it's going to be good anyway, but surviving. surviving. So you're surviving. Have you taken up anything new that you hadn't done in, before the lockdown to kind of like get yourself through it? Or have you just been just cheap chipping well, away? Just for the last lockdown, when the last one happened, I thought, well, I need to get a job now because <laughs> the company's not coming back anytime soon. So I've started doing some teaching. Um, so I'm just teaching like like excluded kids or, you know, kids with trouble with getting being kicked out of school and stuff. Mm. I just started that last month. It's rewarding and they're mm. pretty funny, but the money's a bit... Mm. So I'm deciding in the new year whether to get like a proper, proper job or continue that. I mean, yeah. That job with comedy money would be good, but I don't know. It's all up in the air. Yeah. Well, fair play, man. Well, at least you're finding something that gives you something back rather than just like, okay, just something's going to completely destroy your soul. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I've worked in advertising before and you're like, well, we need a Facebook page for our light bulb. It's like no one gives mm -hmm. a fuck about your <laughs> light bulb, right? No one cares or wants to sign up for riveting light bulb updates. Yeah. At least, yeah, with this, I feel a bit more like doing something. That and, you know, kids are quite fun. So, huh. so far, so good. Yeah, just got to reel it in a little bit with the heckle put downs, right? Sure. To be fair, these are, let's just say this, these aren't your normal school kids. So you can, you can right. heckle them as much as you want. <laughs> That's cool. 
you know, these like, what, what age are they? Like teenagers or yeah, all so kind? I've, from about so far, I've taught from 13 to 16. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's, I mean, they're quite, it's just fun. It's, you know, yeah. also it keeps, they're funny, but it keeps me properly in touch with what's going on. Yeah. So, I like it. What do you listen to now? Do you take, like, make a little list right at the start of class? What, what, what kind of grime you listen to right now? Okay, cool. What's new? Nah, what, no? I, 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 I think. I'm good at this because the basically the whole there's a whole lot like I mean when it comes to education and the society we live in it's mm. kind of crazy because obviously there's a whole push for you know like a woke left wing doctrine you know which to an extent I agree with mm. but all these kids are pushing back they just don't want it mm. and they're looking for educators such as myself and people like me these kids just are not listening to these people. So I go in there and I'm not like the, the greatest teacher, but because I kind of understand, you know, I'm from London, so I teach mm. London kids. I'm on their level mm. and I just, I don't try and preach. I just take it easy and they engage and that's what they want. These, these kids are not engaging with all this. They're not interested and they explicitly say it. Some of the kids won't say it. Yeah. So they're actively looking for more males to go in and teach these kids because they need some sort of, you know, kind of guidance or authority figures. So they engage with me quite a lot. So don't need to go and try and be their friend about grime or whatever. Right, I mean, right. I'll take an interest in, like, if I know they particularly like grime, yeah. then I might talk to them about that. But I won't be going on about, well, let me be your best friend. It's like, no, let me mm-hmm. tell or you're interested in. So, like, there was this one kid, he liked anime. So he's, I don't know nothing about anime really, but he's watching Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah. So I said, all right, show me what Tokyo Ghoul is. And he shows me this YouTube video or whatever, he's, whatever it is. And we start talking about that. So he's, you know, he kind of enjoys it. Then we kind of twist that into his lesson. Yeah. It's good. It's kind of like, nice. to be honest, comedy in a way has got a lot of crossover lessons because you're working the crowd, you've got to keep yeah. them engaged. So it's, it does. Plus, they're funny. They tell you about it. Like the first day I got there, <laughs> some girl was there. She's, oh, fuck off, sir. Fuck off, mate. I this is a fucking bog school, sir. <laughs> I'm just laughing. He said, oh, we're not allowed. He goes, no sir. Like, fuck it, sir. I'm being respectful, sir. <laughs> That's fuck this bog school. Yeah. It's just funny. And the kids are funny and it, it, they're transient. So it's good. One kid I've got there, she's super smart. So she just must find normal, like mainstream education boring. Yeah. And then she engages. So I feel, in, actually, I didn't think I would, but I feel like I'm doing something a little bit, maybe not monetarily hmm. as much as I like, but I get a bit more satisfaction. And I, I teach one kid, he never turns up, so I get paid anyway. So oh, nice. Yeah. Great. Do you get paid by head, per head? or? I, so they basically, you get paid for, yeah, for lessons that you teach, and they give you a student. So you on Wednesday, you've got this kid. And you, but the kid never turns up, but you still get paid. Oh, right. Okay, so individual, you teach them uh, or... Yeah, oh, not teach them one kid at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's good as well. I mean, to, it's just fun. And also, because mm. te- I'm teaching a bit of English, it's kind of starting my um, kind of writing process again as well. Nice. So it's good. It's not bad. We'll see. I've only done it a, uh, for a short time, so we'll mm. see how it goes in the new year. I might turn around and go, ah, oh, this is shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which That's... has happened many times. Mm-hmm. Is that what you did in your degree or did you go to college as well? Or No, so I mean, I went to university. I did Spanish and law. And then after that, I was working in finance and then I did some social media kind of copywriting and advertising stuff. I only took this one because my friend is an intervention officer. So these kids are like, all kids have been expelled from school mm. for whatever. And it's funny, like on the first day, they went, well, you got to do a whole lot of safeguarding and stuff. Uh-huh. And they said, and what, what happens if a kid brings in a knife? What mm. would we say are the, the yeah. risks associated mm. with that? Like death? He went, yeah, death. Death is the risk mm. associated with that. So it's funny, but he, basically, like I said, the reason they wanted, my friend asked me to do it is because he knows that these kids will kind of engage with me. There's a yeah. lot of, for want of a better word, they, they don't have a strong, and I'm not saying I'm a strong male presence, but they just have no kind of male. A lot of the teachers are female, which mm. is fine. They're just not engaging. We believe a lot in, I don't want to sound like Leo and go on about woke doctrine and all mm-hmm. that, but when it comes to the kids, they're just you're telling them one thing, 
and mm. they're, they're just not interested. And because mm. of that, there's a whole section of these kids at these schools that don't engage. So they they get like, you know, they're called intervention officers, mm. and, you know, teachers like me, just to go in and at least get them engaging and, mm. and learning and showing them and opening their, their mm. eyes. Yeah. So that's what I do. He thought I'd be good at it. And I was like, mm. Uh, is it in South London as well? Yeah, yeah. Because you are South London, are you based? Is that that's where you're from? Yeah, I'm in I'm in Pimlico. I'm actually in Edinburgh at the moment. Oh right. I'm in, I'm in Pimlico, and the kids are like in Bermondsey and and all over. But it's a bit messed up because of Corona. It's not so bad. I mean, I I enjoy it. So you use your um your law and your Spanish degree, and you went into into advertising, right? Did you travel no, with that? No, I didn't use my degree at all. Oh right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, finished, I finished my degree, yeah. and then that was ages ago. Then I had broke my back, so I had oh. a, yeah. So then I was basically, I was out for like a year. I had surgery on my back, and I how did that happen? Back, yeah, well, I was just trying to become a wrestler. Oh right. I've seen my 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 show, Darius Davies Road. To WrestleMania, this is all no. all about that. So I was working for Transport for London for Oyster right. Card Help Desk, kind of temping. I didn't really know what I wanted to do to be honest. Still don't. I hate Transport for London, but they're yeah. great employers. This girl came in one time. So I'm thinking about going doing this thing for New York or whatever. And I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna try and do that. So I went to New York and I worked in finance for a bit. Then I came back from finance and I was doing some writing yeah. and advertising and copywriting. So yeah, that's kind of takes me where I am now and then yeah. now obviously I've been doing comedy uh, yeah. and then basically just been doing comedy full time more or less for the last few years Take a look, and then, when did you start man are you like are you over 10 years now or are you like a yeah I started my first well my first ever ever gig was like in 2005 at like some student competition and I knew not. I mean this is how naive I was about comedy right mm. I phoned them before I'd even done a gig. I called up the comedy store. I was like, hi, can I get a gig, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, who are you? Yeah. For me and Dad Davis. And they went, they were like, how many gigs have you done? I was like, none. Oh. And they were like, well, yeah. you? and I didn't, and then they went, I didn't know anything about open mics, nothing. And so I was at university and I saw like the te- Daily Telegraph open mm. mic competition. Right. And I just, turned up it was me versus some girl i don't know who it was i don't know who was there i can't remember didn't even have a set because i didn't know you had to have a set yeah yeah went up and talked about stuff (laughs) i uh turned up and actually well in my mind i think it went mildly (laughs) okay yeah it might have been drizzling shit but i think it was mild i can't remember and then i never gigged again for years yeah then i was in new york i was doing this like kind of exchange program thing Mm. And as part of it, you had to do public speaking. And I'd written this kind of funny thing and it had kind of gone internally viral. Mm. So one of my friends says, oh, you're, you're funny. Why don't you do like a comedy speech for this public speaking thing? Mm. And everyone was doing these boring speeches. So I thought, okay, let me try. And that went, I mean, it must have been gone okay. And then I'm lucky. My friend was like, why don't you go to an open mic? I was like, what's an open mic? Mm. I had no clue, right? Literally no idea how this comedy worked. They turned up on an open mic and I died horribly. Oh, <laughs> then, oh horrible death, horrible mm-hmm. death. And then I just gigged on and off in New York for a little bit. And actually, I was, I was good in New York, but I was good because, you know, I was English and I was at a little bit of chutzpah, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Then I came back to England and thought, well, this is going to be a piece of piss. Mm-hmm. Then I've been gigging ever since. And that was, so I've been gigging, pr- then that was about 2008. Then I moved to Amsterdam for a bit and oh, I've come yeah. back and sporadic, sporadically gig. So I've been gigging solidly, I'd say, since about first gig, 2008, properly mm. from about 2010, when I realised, oh, you've got to have no life and gig every night. Yeah. Week. Do you remember you, the first gig in 2005, right? Do you remember the first joke or thing you said that was in the sort of the guise of a joke? So, so this gig, I don't actually even classify it as <laughs> right. a gig, really, because <laughs> yeah. I just turned up to some some... It was a university of mm. Coventry or somewhere. And I just right. turned up and just was on this thing. But I think it was quite busy. And I think I, I remember the woman after me, she properly died. I mean, even uh, I yeah. knew she died yeah. awfully, <laughs> awfully, right? If I recall, so I was my whole bit then was about, it wasn't a bit. I had this thing about, because this is like before the internet. So 
So just mm. watching TV during the day and the whole thing was like watching Neighbours. Yeah. And I think I said our oh, Neighbours is like day porn. Yeah. With, the joke was that the women were fit in Neighbours and I'd sit there and wank. I can't oh. really remember it. <laughs> and I managed, I managed to extend that to like five minutes of just like bewildered students going, what, what's he talking about? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, it wasn't, but I don't recall it being a complete and utter death, but it just was like zero preparation or anything. Full of energy, full of joy to be just doing it, right? You're up there, foot jacked with adrenaline, right? Well, I, don't, mm, I, I don't know if I go as that far as to say. <laughs> no, that, um, were you just like perfectly fine. Were you just like comfortable in your own skin before you like. You know what? If I, as I recall, oh. that gig, the very, very, very first one. I had no kind of fear or huh. anything. Yeah. But I was young and stupid, right? Right. So whatever. But then when I started doing it in New York, I would get really nervous. And for very, when I first, first started, I remember, well, not fear, but I'd have a big thing of looking up at the audience. Yeah. So I'd be like looking down. Now it doesn't, you know, and I mm. remember one time I was at like some open mic in New York. Some guy went on and talked about cash points or something and mm -hmm. I had a joke about cash points I can't remember what it is now mm. but I thought well I can't do my one because he's just done a joke so I have to do a complete and then mm. I just you know I was new so I was like oh I have to do a complete different set every single time and yeah. thing about me when it came to comedy and to an extent still is is I did comedy because I liked comedy I thought it was funny and I never I didn't do it to kind of become rich or famous or even make you know i didn't mm. even think you can make money from comedy i yeah. saw a lot of other comedians come in with a more i guess professional attitude or i would say a more mercenary attitude they're like oh i realize and they know this like i didn't know not like now i meet comedians i've done so you think you're funny and i'm doing this and that like, man i didn't know nothing about any of this mm. <laughs> when i started mm. i still don't know a lot of this this stuff but it was more important for me to try and be funny and as they say find find your voice which, yeah you know the ongoing process mm. but i think i've got a distinctive voice yeah so. okay so as a performer or as a, when you're on stage what do you see yourself as like and I'm, this is not like as an entertainer or anything like that but like if you had a job uh like you know if, like okay for example sean mio sees himself as a gunslinger uh, and like you know a hired gun just goes around the, you know the world the country and just like you know and just kind of you know, basically takes out audiences really, uh, and it's quite a, quite a, an aggressive archetype that he sees himself as. What would you see yourself as when you go up there? When I'm on form and I'm yeah. in my flow, I'm a preacher. All right. Uh, and uh, other people have likened me to that. It's a because think about comedies. You need to. There's a whole lot of things. Like it's not just jokes. It's about feeling good, feeling the connection, feeling the energy. And then you can kind of convert them. And yeah. Sometimes yeah. when I get it, I really get it. But sometimes I don't get it. <laughs> That's it, right? But you'd rather them totally hate you than just like than than just think, yeah, that was okay. <laughs> yeah. When I first started out, I'd have more like, well, that was terrible. Now sometimes you get like you'll either be great or you'll get like it'd be eh, it was just meh, but yeah. it wasn't shit anymore. Yeah. Which in a way is kind of worse. Yeah. But you've kind of done your job. And also you have to think you can't, obviously you want to sma smash every single, single gig, right? Mm. But if you smash every single, single gig, then you're not smashing every single, single gig, are you? No. Because then you've then that's just the baseline. So you're no yeah. longer smashing gigs. Yeah. I mean, for me as well, sometimes I get bored of, oh, this is my set. Yeah. And I know this set will do well, but I don't want to do it. And you got to try and pick and choose where you're going to do new material and what you're going to do. In in a way, I was probably more creative when I was new because I was doing new stuff all the time. Yeah. But a lot of new shit stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas now I'm a lot better. Yeah. I won't, won't take as many risks. Right, right. Yeah, you want like, to get so booked would, again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so, yes, now so. I have, so now I have, but, but going forward, next year and stuff i will I, I, i'm going to push myself to not like if i want i know i could go on and do my set and I, it would kill yeah. but i've not learned anything and now you got to push yourself yeah. and maybe if you die you die so it's yeah. about picking and choosing when to do it yeah and That's what it. gigs to do it at. choose your battles right 
Yeah, exactly. That's it, man. Was it like you? I mean, saying that, like you know, you you didn't you don't know the the how to you know get on. Like you've been in loads of competitions, man. You've been finalists in loads of things, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, was it English Comedian of the Year, uh, mm-hmm. the Laughing Horse, Hackney Empire, you know, the Reading Festival, uh, like you know, in Leicester Square, uh, New Act uh, was finalist as well. So oh, yeah. like you've done all these, man. I know Britain's Got Talent. Like, what was it like to go on Britain's Got Talent and do stand up? I mean, I've seen some people go on there and just really have a rough time, man. I've been on that twice. Huh. <laughs> they messaged. They saw me mm. at some gig and they messaged me and we do it. And I went. So they. This was a few years ago when they were just ripping the piss out of comedians. Yeah. Like maybe 2015, and I was like, Nah, I'm not gonna do it. And they were, please, mm. please. I went, No. I went, I'll just come for an audition i went no i'm not going to come i don't come to wait i know you'd have to wait i went all right then fuck it i'll come right yeah i went and it was just the audition with me and one producer and actually i, I smashed that audition yeah. really i mean it really i remember like it was one just a, and they said okay uh we'll put you straight through to like the tv live round so yeah. yeah you will put me through straight through <laughs> then i went there but then i was chatting to my friend and he was like well the thing is you don't want it to make you look shit right mm. so i decided for that time, that I was going to be consistently mediocre. So I gave them no story, no nothing. Uh, and I wasn't great, but I wasn't shit. Uh, so I thought I'll either go through, which will be good, uh, but they won't, they're not going to make me look shit. Uh, so I think I got, I would, I used to do a joke about youths on the bus and it was, it was funny, right? Uh, but I realized it's, it's not, a, it was more of a, it was a routine, it was a story and you got to get into it. Uh, like, and to be honest, that kind of comedy you need to be bam bam bang jokey 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 straight away it was never really for me and also talking about london buses to mm. you know three multi-millionaire judges yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did it really go around mm. so anyway at that time i think i got all buzzed off it wasn't actually that painful because it I wasn't shit i wasn't good uh-huh. so i just wasn't on tv so that was great yeah. then a, a couple years ago they asked me again i was in new york and i said no nah, i'm not doing it went, oh come on come on i said all right fly me back and i'll do it so they paid for my flight, so I got free holiday. Nice. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. The, I got all yeses, but Simon Cow wasn't there that day. So it was, oh. it was only three judges and Simon Cow wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So they just didn't put me through, even though I got through. But even that time when I went through, I never had like a sob story. I didn't yeah. give them shit. <laughs> they're, 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 they were like, tell us about yourself, Des, but what hardship do you mm. have? And I, <laughs> my story at that mm. time was, well... I'm living in New York with my fiance. He's really hot. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a, an amazing life. Uh, I flow. I, I, I flip between London and New York. Uh, I just take make jokes about plugs or whatever it is. Yeah. Meanwhile, they got some guy there like oh, I've got. I was I, I was a refugee. Oh, my uh, whole family was murdered in front. I'm Batman. I was they yeah. killed in front of me. And uh, this is it, man. This is my. If I don't get this, my child of cancer will die. They will mm, die. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was like, oh yeah, this is great, and I'm doing that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you struggle with appliances yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. Th- my biggest struggle is, is plugging in plugs in, in America yeah. yeah so I got through didn't get but they didn't put me through and then again last year the one that Nabil was on they were asking me oh come and do it come and do it I was mm. like look I've done this now however many times it's yeah. pointless but I mean it, it it can be good I don't think it really fits my well i don't know maybe it does but anyway so i did but I, I didn't do it again this year yeah so I, i've done it twice once i got buzzed off and once i went through but didn't go through so. oh well like I, that's even that's a draw yeah, then yeah eh? even but i mean for me i mean i know nabil did one and steve Royal. steve Royal was always going to do well because hmm. he's like he's got that family kind of entertainment does a lot of the variety of skills yeah so he can juggle he can sing he can you know what i mean he's hmm. not just a guy talking and telling jokes right yeah nabil has a presence and authority they're going to give him some leeway right they yeah. want to watch him but when i went on there i'm like yeah i'm just like you know i'm competing i don't have anything else to bring except for me yeah. and i need that power as a comedian when i come on like as in i have the like when I, this is why it doesn't work for me to stand up so well on on Britain's Got Talent. Right. When I do comedy, I don't come up, so it's silent, and then wait for the audience to question me. I question them. Like, what's up, Simon? I rip the piss out of them, and yeah. I go into them straight away, and then I do that. 
So the last time when I went through, I got the mic and I was I came out talking and they tried to interrupt me. So, so they took the so the what's up people I'm yeah. Derek, you know whatever and they were oh where are you from? It's like that doesn't happen in stand up. No, you know what I mean it's like oh hello. It's like it should be me. Uh, look at Simon's shitty hair. Charles up to here whatever. Mm-hmm. There's Alicia Dixon, that famous band Mystique you never heard of. Da- David Williams, you know whatever the yeah, yeah. Is, right. And then you go into them. So it's a bit, it, it didn't really work for my style of comedy because mm. it's like, oh, you're just a dude talking. Yeah. At least when Steve Rural does it, it's like, okay, start. And he just, it's like, so you're, you're talking to me. All right, start mm. comedy. No, he's just still talking. Steve Rural. All right, start talking, Steve Rural. No, yeah. well, I'm going to juggle. Break yeah, it up, yeah. Right? Nabil, what he did well when he was on it, when I talk about presence, is he already knew, I think, if I remember his first one, he went straight in on Alicia and he said some joke about Alicia or that they'd seen each other, something like that. I can't mm. remember if a thing, but he had that instant connection and I never really had that. Mm. And then in the later rounds, the good thing is that they, they don't do that. I mean, it, it can be good, but I don't know. So like you're kind of trying to create a little bit of energy, like in a bit of uh, conflict, if you like, with the roasting them a little bit then just to kind of give you that little bit of a lift and then you go okay well here we go you've got a bit of a a stage respect if you like yeah well i mean because like so if you think about it the reality is we're just telling the kind of jokes mm. i mean maybe i might be more experienced maybe now i'm probably better than i was i'm, I'm better i can maybe handle it better but you know you're following like people are genuinely amazing like i, I was on stage and this is like like this woman like this singing like an angel like and I was like, wow, this is incredible. She got like three buzzed nose. Oh. Then there's like guys like getting knives thrown at their heads. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, now here I come out <laughs> when the exact same clothes I always wear, <laughs> the fucking nothing. You know what oh. I mean? It's just like, yeah. it's, it's, you're naked it's, with a mic, really, aren't you? Just like, yeah. that's all you got, you know? It's and, like, wow. and the only thing you do have as a comedian is you have the power, right? Mm. So what I'm saying is, when I come out and I've got the power, I can rip the audience. And, okay, he's a comedian, now I see it. But as yeah. soon as I have to stop yeah. for them to say, oh, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? What, what's your job? Yeah. yeah, You lose that power because then you're like, oh, wait a minute. He's just talking. Mm. Oh, now he's trying to turn into comedy mode. Yeah. So these jokes are, he's already prepared these jokes. Yeah. Whereas comedy should be spontaneous. It should be just me and you chatting and like, yeah. oh, he's just really funny. But as soon as you know, it's kind of an act. It's not funny. That's unless it. it's obvious that it's like one liners. Mm. Right. But if you're like a comedian who just chats. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, this is an act. This isn't him mm. real because yeah. the real him is he works for this and he does yeah. that. And I mean, it breaks it up. So that's my yeah. kind of thought. On that. Yeah, no, totally. You're talking like you've just seen the accountant. You don't want to see the accountant do jokes, do you? You exactly. know, this is like, you're like what the, what, the, what, 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 what's it? who's this guy? This, this isn't him. He's the accountant, the guy that does all the, the admin, you know, and now you're going to try and like see the admin guy do. That's ridiculous, mate. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's like it, it needs to have a momentum, isn't it? Like, a, a oh, yeah, oh, here we go, you know, rather than just oh, and we're throwing you down and then off you yeah. go. It's just awkward. I don't know. I still personally think it's kind of a tough thing for comedy. Yeah. Like, so if you look last year, the dude was on the piano playing funny songs. Mm. He's got, there's a difference between him. Hi, I'm a dad and this is my thing. And then Mm. I'm playing funny piano songs. Steve Rule again, he's got like, he can, there's very, there's a very clear line between Steve Royal, the, um, the man and Steve Rawl, the performer, because mm. he's suddenly he's pulling ping pong balls out of his mouth where he's doing tricks. Yeah. And you can see, with, but when but between me and the performer, the line's very thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very yeah. thin, very thin line. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute, it's just, he's still just talking, he's just a dude talking. I just saw a dog dancing. So yeah. it's not as hard. So I mean, respect to like the bill because he, he, he's the same as me really, mm. but and he managed to walk that line you know you spend years trying to be you on stage you know the, or the closest thing you can be you know that remains interesting without just being that admin guy as we say you know it's like you and then you're like okay well and now i have to be you know and, and now i have to be something else you know in, for the whole time isn't it you got to put that act yeah. on as soon as you go on and and like you exactly. know you know really think to yourself well, well when they start asking me questions you know you start a- answering them maybe answering them like just completely filling them full of shit you know going well actually this well i'm an astronaut mate you know, <laughs> so, you yeah. know what is it you know to, just to kind of like you need to have that everything don't you it's all it's all a, a tactics isn't it really um to try and you know just try and get your head above it really 
<laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I mean, look, people say, oh, it's kind of like King Gong because you got to go back. Mm. It's not because King Gong, like you said, if you go out, we're all kind of playing characters or versions mm. of ourselves as comedians. Mm. It's like no one gets that mad about whatever, whatever it is, right? Mm. So if they saw you just do you and then change into a character, you know, it, it just doesn't work. So it's, it, it's tough. I, I'll do it again mm. if they accede to all my demands. <laughs> you got a list now. You yeah. got a list. Yeah, which they usually do. So I'll, I'll do it, but sometimes nice. I don't. So, yeah. Just get a one-way ticket to somewhere. Say, look, I'm over here now. So I'm in Hawaii. So you're going to pay for my flight back. <laughs> exactly. you know, the sub story is, look, you just took me away from a holiday in Hawaii. I mean, look, what the hell do you want from me? This is the third time me doing this. I haven't won it yet. Look, for fuck's sake. You're, how, how many shows have you done, Darius? Like at the at Fringe or, or otherwise? So I usually do each show kind of twice uh-huh. or a version of each show. So I've done HBO special. I've done that HBO special and HBO special uncensored. Road to WrestleMania. Road to WrestleMania, the director's cut, mm-hmm. Art of the Troll, and Persian of Interest. So mm-hmm. I've done three proper shows spread over six years. Right. So I, I, I do one version of it, and then I'll the next year I'll, ha- I'll do the actual proper one of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the test drive is the first yeah. year, right? Oh, cool. And, and then I do Hate and Live for probably six years or seven oh, nice. years now, or whatever as well. Uh, which is your favorite show of the three you've done? Do you know what? I like, to be honest, I liked all the shows. Uh. I like Road to WrestleMania. So HBO special was basically, at the time, all my best jokes. And it was really good, yeah. I think. You know, it was just like stand-up was playing to a small room. Yeah. There's just basically stand-up, a really good stand-up show. Mm. And sometimes, I guess it could be dependent on, um, I had that connection with the audience. Road to WrestleMania, I enjoyed that personally because I'm a wrestling fan and it was mm. about wrestling. Persian of Interest was probably the best actual show because I'm I, I am better at shows now. I know how to link it and smooth it out. And I think that was probably the most accomplished show. But through, I think all of my shows were good. But then, you know, fuck it, I don't know. So they all built you up different with different skills, right? So the first one's like, right, I can write the joke. Uh, the second one, like, because you just love, it has a subject, you just, you're, you know, it was your life for a bit until well, you broke a, your back. A, yeah, it's about a story about resting about yeah. me and resting um and that was really good yeah and it appealed to wrestling fans and non-wrestling fans it got some nice reviews nice. and then persian of interest the art of the troll which is basically the same show was the most accomplished mm. i think each show has like is like getting like well this is really really good mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. persian of interest is really really good yeah just the skills are coming together like of storytelling then stand up like how to smash the joke in there and smooth it out and like you know and then link the next thing to the other thing they're all building all build all the skills build don't they mm-hmm. um you, i want to go back to like your you broke your back man like because you were a wrestling fan and you were looking to become a pro wrestler is that right that was the dream baby. so wow okay right so how did you break your back man what happened uh, i was it, there was no like catastrophic accident right. although in my show i said there was it was just basically growth spur and then wear and tear mm. and continually falling on the back like right. over a short period of time and doing stuff that i was you know i was like wrestling guys were well wrestling i was working with these guys who were a lot bigger than me mm. and my back was just really painful i went for loads of x-rays and they couldn't find it until i Went to a specialist. They went, well, you've got some cracked vertebrae and stuff, and they're chipping away. So yeah. you got a choice. You can either leave it, yeah. and it will probably kind of fuse naturally, but crooked. Yeah. Or you can get an operation, and we'll fuse it ourselves with right. steel rods. What part of the back did you break? Like through the middle. So okay, so thoracic, what. thoracic yeah. vertebrae. Right. Oh man. Okay. So, but I was, to be honest, in hindsight. So this was 2005 mm-hmm. to when I had it done. I would have tried properly intensive uh, yoga, physio and everything mm-hmm. now yeah. had I had known. But the, the internet wasn't really around then. Yeah. So there wasn't as much information. But I mean, my back, he's done a, he's done a great job, the surgeon. I mean, I can't really twist or bend. And technically right. I'm disabled, huh. uh, although I don't admit that. I would have maybe tried really strengthening it up. Like I know a mm. lot more about training and physiology and biology now, right. so I would have done it that. But 
done now. The, yeah. the, the main thing it does is that I can't really twist or bend. And my parkour career, whilst not over, <laughs> isn't as great as it should be. Yeah. I was in real bad pain. Like I'd wake up, I'd walk down the street. And by the time I got to the end of the street, mm. I'd be in just agony mm. for the rest of the day. But the operation itself was the most painful thing ever in my yeah. entire life. Yeah. But funnily enough, with that show, Road to WrestleMania, it was, it was a really dramatic show. I did, like, I had sound effects and stuff and nice. x-rays and I did it well. I, twice at the same part of the show, three people fainted. Two people fainted on one day and then another person fainted the next day. Yeah. And like the shocking reveal at the end. Yeah, and right. I thought, oh, maybe this is just like... But then when they fainted at the same place, I was like, wow, maybe this is quite shocking. <laughs> yeah. So like uh, you got some great reviews from that show and like you're... Com- I, mean, I mean, you don't have any pain in it anymore or... No, my back, my back's fine now. That's good, man. Oh no, I still, I get back, I get back pain, but just like normal, kind of. I don't get like I was crippled. My back still has back. Like I have to look after my back, do exercise and stuff like that. Right. But it's not like it was when when it when it was before. I mean, it's still I still get back pain after stretch and do a Mm. load of back exercises. But yeah, was it bad? Oh, that's all right then. That's all right. It's good. We're, so, we're happy getting to the story, man. But maybe you could just like, uh, you know, re- retrofit that to your story for ITV's Britain's Got Talent again next time. Go, well, you know, the broken back. And, yeah. You know, I can really, really milk the shit right. out of it. But, but Technically disabled. A, I mean, but this is me. I mean, I could have yeah. probably come up with a sub story, but I, yeah. those, I don't like that. I don't, I was like, listen, I'm here to tell, I don't, I know I understand. I, part of my thing with comedy is I don't yeah. like kind of playing that side of the game will yeah. be in like, uh, oh, I'm a bit of a victim. Like, why don't you yeah. do Iranian jokes? You're Iranian. So I thought, mm. man, I'm a comedian. Yeah. Not, I don't want to be known as a comedian, yeah. not an Iranian comedian. Because like, you know what they say is, your weakness is your strength, you know? And like, that, I think sometimes sends the wrong message to your weakness is your strength. So, okay, right, well, what's wrong with me? Okay, fine. Is this my strength? No, technically, that's just one part of you. It's not the whole you, you know? Don't just lean on that whole thing to make that your entire set, your entire, you know, character, your your personality, your persona leans on that disability or um, uh, a pronoun or something like that. You know, you just need to kind of like find the thing that is where your humour comes from, your logic, isn't it really, is what it is, I think, what your voice is. Do you think? Mm-hmm. I agree with that entirely. I uh, found out this year that I'm, I've got a broken uh, L3 in my lower back. And for oh, years, wow. and for the for the years, right, because oh, like, every time I got stressed, it would just go. And I was like, oh, man. Um, so like, and I was like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a thing that, uh, you know, Luke's got a weak lower back. This year just went and I was like, just not, it's not getting better, you know, hot war balls mm-hmm. and stuff aren't fixing it. So I went to a chiropractor, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like, um, and, um, and like, and I was like, right, went, you, you know, you step on two scales and that, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, one side was is severely weighted, like about twelve kilos on one side. And oh, I, was, wow. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's why I'm walking because you know we do like auditions and stuff for things, and they say want to see you walking. And I took uh, my wife took video of me walking, and I was like, yeah. I said, like, why the fuck didn't you tell me I walk like this? You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm walking like I've been shot like seven times. You know what I mean? Like in and, and, and like I was dragging my left leg, and she thought I said oh, she said I, I thought you always just normally walk like that. No, that's not normal. <laughs> you know. So anyway, <laughs> and I was like, right. So I, had to, I, went, I went to chiropractor and he. And he said this, he showed me the x-ray, you know, and I was like, oh man, so I've got like a whole bit on it now. But when I was starting comedy, if I'd have found that out, my show would have been about that. It would have been yeah. that whole thing of like, look guys, I'm broken. <laughs> you know, so, what, so what have you done for your back then? Oh mate, I just went to the chiropractor um, for like the last three months or so and he's cracked it so much that honestly I feel like 10 years younger mate it's just I'm so much better now oh, really? um, it's it's just he, he just and I, the thing is though when I went to him first I thought yeah it's probably just like you know show me a couple of stretches I'll be grand mm-hmm. uh, x-ray broken L3 I was like great fantastic wow. I am not perfect <laughs> 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 so it was like just a no. funny thing man I was like oh mate you know and you know it's weird isn't it when you meet someone else go, oh, yeah I've broken back too oh man me too oh mate I know what you know, this guy compare chiropractors what do you have done yeah oh man this and 
it's like you start it's like when you get to an age it's like you're you're talking about like what you've done to your car because your body yeah. is your vehicle right you're like oh man yeah, yeah well you know got got the got the insoles yeah it's great yeah. <laughs> you, know I mean? you got the insoles too yeah okay what kind of shoes you got oh yeah I, the asics oh asics uh, nimbus yeah they're great as well for running and they're also great for walking do you know it gets so yeah. silly man it's you know it's not about the car anymore it's just about fucking locomotion man <laughs> yeah it's not um yeah well my backs uh here we go come to, on I tell me to, tell me what i, I got go man to, I, go, I, go, I go to the osteopath quite a lot oh nice nice okay yeah, i haven't been to I, one I, of those and i well, it's basically like a chiropractor <laughs> and i found a new one where they um called gun therapy that I go oh, right. to where they put needle it's kind of like a really good um a bit like it? acupuncture is it yeah a bit like acupuncture ah. but very targeted and that, that that really releases the muscles and helps a lot nice all right gun um, therapy all right sweet yeah. right okay right uh, yeah good <laughs> I recommend it. You, you also do Hate and Life, right? The Hate and Life. Mm-hmm. I, I did it the first year. That was down in the espionage uh, oh, yeah. back in the day, man. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So you still do that every year at the, at the Fringe? Yeah, I mean, we try. It's come on a long way since since when you did it. But it's, yeah, that's a super fun show. So that's still going. We did it in Australia at the festival oh, this nice. year. But, you know, we haven't done it since because of the because of the pandemic. But yeah. that's a, that, that show, that's just a nice part fun show it's fun for comedians i think we yeah. just enjoy doing it so you do not do an online one this year or you're just like no we just need an uh, audience for it yeah i mean to be honest we haven't really i i don't know yeah you need an audience to do the suggestions and stuff and i'm not too sure about how much i enjoy online gigs yeah and how worthwhile they are totally so. it's like it's, it's really it's like it's like a cup of tea compared to meth isn't it mm-hmm. i've only i've only done like two online gigs yeah so we, yeah. we didn't really push that it's a bit painful isn't it it's like there's no i want any they're there for the buzz of the instant feedback and you know it's it's just not the same it's not the same it's at not all. the same i mean it's, it's i mean maybe though it might it depends what goes on with this lockdown and stuff maybe mm. that will be have to be done but yeah i try to avoid them as far as possible but now i might get back into them it's a bit like watching a, a home video of someone you don't know isn't it it's like okay well why am i watching this weird uh this person i don't know this stranger on on my tv that i've no idea like you've accidentally picked up a, like a tape or, or like a, a, oh, yeah. a dvd well, when, it comes to la- when it comes to online gigs i always thought it's like you're gonna watch stuff online mm. you got the world netflix <laughs> yeah. amazon everything yeah. why do you want to watch someone with bad lighting bad mm. camera resolution yeah. bad editing do really cringeworthy Stand up. It just doesn't. Mm. Stand up doesn't work. Stand up is funny when you see them and they have authority. But when you're on Zoom or something and you're exactly the same size box as yeah. everyone else, yeah, and you're in 720p, you lack. The, <laughs> you know what I mean? What authority do you have as a comedian? That's I'd it. rather do it right than do it badly. Or mm. saying that, I just did this, did one for a, a friend in New York, oh, nice. and that went really well. Oh, but nice. I did, I use multimedia for that, so it's visual, mm. so it kind of works. But stand up, stand up. I just don't. I mean, it it can work, but you, you know, personally, I don't think we anyone excels in it. But I don't think comedians particularly excel at it. Mm. And like, do you uh, do you do do you act as well in between time, or what else do you do? I have. I like. I'd like to act. I was on Spotlight and stuff. Mm. I haven't actually done any acting, but I was gonna go update all my spotlight and do it a bit more this year but then the pandemic happened so yeah. things get back to normal i'd like to do more acting yeah i did act when i was a kid oh yeah what, what did you do i oh, just like school plays and stuff and, mm. but i was well i mean i was as good as anyone in a in a school play can be yeah yeah <laughs> and it's very hard it's very hard the scripts are very limited and you know it's um it's a challenge isn't it for sure to hold the, the those parents attention even yeah. your own no nah, but I, I was i was pretty good i did i was the artful dodger oh nice uh, so i was quite good when did you like think did you like kind of go comedies for me that's what i want to do or did you like was it just that moment that you went for that uh telegraph competition well, I remember I saw Eddie Murphy uh-huh. for the first time when I was at school. I saw Roar Delirious and I couldn't yeah. believe it. it was like the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And I didn't even, I always thought he was just an actor. I didn't know he did stand up. I thought, wow, this is amazing. And I never really, people talk about 
class and stuff and comedy, right? Mm. And for me, that extends to just knowing that it exists, knowing that there were comedy clubs, knowing that having that kind of knowledge, like when I was, I didn't even understand that there were comedy clubs. I didn't mm. know that. Or I didn't had no clue, inkling how you got into stand up. I didn't understand that. Mm-hmm. But, so I didn't have a thing about, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And even when I started doing comedy, like in, in New York, I did it because I enjoyed it and I thought I was funny. I w- wasn't doing it to like, oh yeah, I'm going to make a career out mm. of it, which may, in a way is maybe I should have done that, but you know, that's not my personality to be like, oh, so some people are more driven, but I think it comes across. I don't know. I, I just, you know, whatever. You see some people think it's a bit like that didn't happen. So then my mum walked in on me. No, she didn't. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Stop lying. <laughs> it's more of a uh, like just for the the com- just for the comedy itself. You like you're you're doing it really, not just for the not for the trophies. Just the like you know you like well, no, well, just no, the... now 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 I want to try and get trophies and get paid as well. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course, speaking. of course. But when I got into comedy, I did it because I love comedy. Yeah. It's like when people play football, right? Because yeah. they love football, and then they become great footballers on top of that. Yeah. Whereas some people, I think, get into comedy because they were actors or actresses or whatever, or presenters, mm. and they realize that, oh, I can't, mm, this is a way to do that as a shortcut. So you see people who aren't proper comedians, and they, but they, they've used comedy as a shortcut. Like, I mean, in fairness, like it does all the skills that you learn in comedy build into all the other things as well. All the rest of the stuff is easy compared to comedy, really, isn't it? It's just like, okay, fine. Well, you know, do, do you think, do you agree or, or not? I agree. I mean, I think um, thing about like I think if you're a comedian, you can act. But I think you can, you know, I do also think acting is a specialized skill yeah. as well. A lot of comedians, when they act, they're just playing themselves or a version of themselves. Yeah, they're not like stretching themselves like, whoa, this is something completely different. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I, I think it does give you some skills, but you know, I, I wouldn't want to take away from actors because actually good actors it is a skill of course no i mean of course i mean like you know but like it you get a a good all-round workout i guess for the other things if you're good at stand-up right then you should have the ability to connect and Mm. have a presence and understand about timing and stuff like that the thing is for me when i try and transfer i have to be in kind of comedy mode so like if I'm gonna do acting, I have to put my brain into like comedy mode. Yeah. Like, okay, so I've got my so my little bit turned on. I don't know, it's weird. I think comedy can set you up a can set you up a a lot of way. Mm. But I think there's also been people who have got into comedy as a shortcut to go into something else who aren't actually very good at comedy. They weren't really comedians, mm. but they knew they could use this, use their contacts. And they could go on and use it to get into writing, producing, directing, or whatever yeah, it may yeah. well be. Are you superstitious? No, well, not really. No, not at all. I, mean, I, won't, I won't. I won't go out of my way to walk under a le- <laughs> under a ladder. But. No, when you were going on stage in in America, did you like kind of go around? What, did you have any particular um, idiosyncrasies that you might go through, or like you know routines? You go, okay, well, I'm just gonna have this in my nah. pocket. Nothing like. I mean, have, have you ever been like that? My, my so. The only thing for me is I need to have a clear thought, clear head mm. and not have any problems. So I realized that earlier, Sean, if people who will come and watch you to do a gig and mm. I'd have to like look after them before the gig, yeah. it would it wouldn't be good because, you know, if you're going to work and you've got to bring someone with them and you've got to make sure they're OK, you're not thinking about comedy. And then my mum would like call me like 10 minutes before a gig like buy me some milk on the way home I said man I don't need this shit so I just I the only thing I do is before before like if people want to come watch me now I say come I'm not going to talk to you till I'm done Hmm. I don't mind talking to comedians before the gig because they're comedians they know what's going on but I don't like talking to people before a gig and I don't like getting anything that's nagging before Hmm. a gig so that's my only kind of superstition so it's just so i can have and i like maybe a couple of minutes just so i know what i'm trying to want to go over so, yeah but nothing like oh i've got to wear my purple socks or anything no, like that like your lucky pants or nothing yeah. like that no no oh so you were uh we're on mtv's new talent contest were you oh yeah that was age was ago that in, that was in new york so oh, i right. won some sort of mtv this is so long ago right it's very pointless i, I basically mm. was performing 
for comics called C O M I X. And yeah. there's this MTV New Talent search, and I won it. But I basically won it because, like I said, I had like bravado and stuff like that. Mm. It was different in New York because they were all, like, hey, I'm American. I was mm. like, you're all right, mate. I'm English. So it was different. But yeah, then my visa ran out. So that put back uh. paid to that. Uh. A long time ago. Yeah. So an uh, accident of birth that just took out with that, um, that win away from you then, was it? Well, no, no. I, so basically, the prize was you went and met them at you know, MTV and you discussed maybe presenting and stuff like that. But I couldn't present because I didn't have a visa. So yeah. That's uh, what it was. All right. What's on the on the agenda for the next, you know, few months, do you think? Uh, what well, are you going to do? On the, on the agenda is I'm writing, uh, like, more content, mm. creating more content and hopefully produce it, starting to produce content properly. Yeah. With... Uh, you know, get good videos and audio and stuff like that. So that's nice. hopefully what I'm going to do. We're going to start our podcast up again with Nico and Leo. All right, cool. What's that called? It's called Three Speech, but we're debating whether to change the name. We're doing it in collaboration with Voxel Comedy. So they're oh, going really? to be producing it. So we're, that's just all something on the go at the moment. Nice. Uh, have, do you've written any sitcoms or you uh, or like, you know, uh, movies or anything? Or? Nah, no, no sitcoms. I mean, so... I'm gonna try. I'm thing is I'm late. I'm very. I have to say my failings in comedy aren't that I'm not good enough. It's that I'm a perfectionist mm. combined with being incredibly lazy, which means I get nothing done. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I need to set myself targets. But I might. I'm thinking about writing things. You know, it's like working out. You can't do it all at once. You got to just like, yes. layer it in. But mm. I need to start layering it in quickly. But yeah, hopefully in the new year. I'll be producing more content and writing more stuff. And where can we find you, Darius? Uh, I'm on Instagram as Persian of Interest and DariusDavies.com. Although in January, I'm going to go on a social media sabbatical because oh. I think it's, I just think it's bad for my mental health and I've yeah. had enough of it. That's fair. And you're, what, what, yeah. what am I doing? I'm scrolling on here. Yeah, it's that. And it's, yeah, it's like it's a waste of time. I mean, I'll keep mm. it to post stuff, but. I don't know how much I'm going to try and not use it so much. Just, I, you know, in, I was on Facebook during lockdown. I was mm. yeah, wasting so much time. Yeah. Then I got a 30 day ban yeah. and I was furious. Right. Yeah. But actually it's been the best thing because now I rarely go on Facebook and I'm like, yeah, what I, I was using it. I, I was, the excuse was oh, I was getting gigs off it, but mm. not really. I'm thinking, man, this is just a waste of time. Just people, like everyone's like, Ooh, this is you're just arguing yeah. left, right, and no one cares what everyone's no. saying, so it's pointless. Yeah. So I think I might just delete Facebook for, for good, which is just out of a, yeah. even though no one will notice, Mark Zuckerberg won't notice, it. Yeah. my spite, I will notice. Yeah. And I don't like that everyone's kind of, I feel there's creeping sense of, uh, not it, autonomy you're like just it's just all coming down like i just see it like do i need instagram do i need to post everything i'm doing do i need that mm. i might keep instagram or facebook but i'll delete the apps off my phone and yeah. i'll only use it if i want to share my own content yeah. otherwise do i need do you need to know what i've had for lunch do you need to know yeah. what i'm doing it's like you find yourself posting like oh wow look I'm in a pub having such a great time yeah, no. it's like I'll piss off <laughs> it's, yeah, totally it's just like breeze slope of inadequacy every time you just go on to like the, a feed like, oh I was on my own Instagram but now I'm looking at everybody else's what, do, what oh, no no good, no I just want to do my own thing post it drop it leave it and yeah. like it, it's just um, but do you know uh, the uh, this content you're going to be producing do you have a name of the channel yet or I don't do you want to release no, that later probably be Darius Davies on YouTube I mean yeah. I haven't I've ordered a new camera so nice. What you got? I've got a Sony A6400. So okay. Look forward to some badly produced content. Oh, um, mate, it's the beginning, mate. It's the <laughs> beginning. It's all terrible at the beginning, and then it just slowly, gradually gets worse. No, better. Yeah, <laughs> over, great. O- overly exposed, to oh, terrible fantastic. audio, and fantastic. bad jump cuts. Mate, that's um, it. That's what. That's the way forward, man. It's just like a, a chronological uh, <laughs> um, account of you descending into madness is what it's going to be, isn't it? That's right, <laughs> mate. Well, I well look, look honestly, look. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. About you know what's Thanks coming up, man. Me, man. And well, yeah, 
sent me this link and I will use it in one of my few forays onto social media. Oh, wonderful, yeah. mate. Nice one. I will I will send it to you when it's released and you can send me a bio, whatever you want and, and like a, what, what you got coming up next and uh, plug the shit out of it. Uh, um, nice but I want to say, oh, oh, sorry, before we go, uh, I mean, like it's one of the th- reasons why you got off social media is because you were the king of the comedy collective for a little bit. Oh yeah, well no, what? I still am the king. I'm oh. being the king of the comedy Excuse collective. Excuse me, apologise. Yeah, I, I accept your apologies. <laughs> I mean, it was, the thing is, it was fun doing, performing the coup of the century, mm-hmm. but now it's just boring now. Yeah. Also, it turns out, in hindsight, Simon Kane was right with not letting people post stuff yeah. because now it's just all this shit just, drizzling shit <laughs> to post, yeah. oh, which God, I was yeah. the one who I was the one who uh, I was the one who caused that and now I deeply regret it I might stop that post because it's, some of it's just so crap yeah. but I, like I said I'm not I'm not really using Facebook as much anymore I feel mm. a lot better for it it's just yeah. rubbish man yeah man that's it just focus on you and that's what it is yeah. it's just like it's all just I don't need to know about the other sort of stuff and people asking for a donation to whatever the fuck it is I'm like look I, I'm sorry no go away yeah. <laughs> but like you were you were a very uh, uh, kind king when you uh, usurped the throne of the comedy collective it was very uh, well, there was some very well written words there I was like oh nice one so you know you left you you still the king of, of the collective yeah I, I got kicked off but then I've come back and oh. retaken my place right, but the nice. thing is now I don't use Facebook as much but I'm just looking at the collective now yeah <laughs> and like okay this thing the part the petition thing one <laughs> shitty promotion yeah Two promotion, three promotion, mm. four promotion, five promotion, mm. six promotion. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna tell them no more, no more self promotion. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Take it easy, isn't it? It's a yeah. uh, new year, man. Starting new. Uh, yeah, it's from the new year. I'm gonna right. do it. All right, wicked man. Hey, I'll Darius. Have- Happy New Year, man. And uh, I wish you all the best in the next coming uh, content you're going to be creating, mate. Amazing. Cheers, man. Happy New Year to you and Happy New Year to all the listeners listening. And that was episode 118 with the dangerous comedian, Artful Dodger, one half of the Hate and Life crew, one third of the Three Speech podcast. And you can find him on Instagram as at Persian of interest go and check his stuff out he's a brilliant comedian and hopefully hate and life will be coming on a tour around the country and you can go and see that if not get yourself up to edinburgh and check out hate and live it's a great show i did it back in 2013 and it was so much fun but that was when it was first starting out now i'm sure it's absolutely just fucking smashing man so go and check it out hate and live and also go and check out Darius's live dates. That's DariusDavies.com if you want to see his live dates. And also go and check out Hate Live in Edinburgh when you can. You can also follow me. I'm on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok as at Winter Dominus. That's W-I-N-T-E-R-D-O-M-I-N-U-S. And uh, you'll see some content I'm going to be releasing soon on those places. Some comedy videos. Yep, that's what I'm going to be doing as well. So you can also see me live on the first Tuesday of the month in Redbourne. And you can find the gig dates in the Comedy Defect Facebook group. So join that for live gig dates and also where the podcast is released first. And you can also like the Comedy Defect page. And look, if you like this podcast enough and you want to donate, you can. Just go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast and donate as much as little as you feel this podcast is worth. But if you can't donate, that's all right. Just tell your friends about your favorite episode because it tells people where we are and what we're up to. But if you can't do that, just leave some nice review. Uh, you know what, right? And if you can't do any of that stuff, just, you know, enjoy your life. Get out there, live it. Uh, or come to the live shows. Uh, if you want to do comedy, let me know. I'm more than happy to guide you, to help you write jokes. Look, I love comedy, so just give me a shout. Just drop me a line. I'm not hard to find. So yeah, and that's it for episode 118. And uh, for next episode, for 119, we've got an incredible comedian. And his name is Dane Baptiste. That's for episode 119. I gig with Dane when I was only going about two years. And he was great. And he just hit the ground running, man, and just went stratospheric. And uh, oh, he's such a good comic. He's released TV shows. He has got his own podcast that unfortunately ended a while ago called Dane Baptiste Questions Everything. 
he is an absolutely brilliant comedian. And sometimes when I do a podcast, I feel, yeah, that was that was great. And when I did the podcast with Dane, it just, it was sublime. It was lovely. It was a guest thing. And also it was like, just I've done this podcast enough now and it just, everything just fell into place. And it was a, it was in my head, a perfect podcast. It just went so smoothly. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy that one. That's episode 119 with a brilliant comedian and writer, Dane Baptiste. We'll see you at the end of November. <laughs>